Hey everyone, this is Nick and if you're watching this then probably most of your computing experience is already based on open source software. But the computer we actually use the most is our smartphones. And while it's pretty complicated to open source an iOS device, because Apple doesn't really allow at least free software apps using the GPL on their app store, with Android the story is kind of different. So we're going to take a look at how to turn your Android smartphone into something that's a little bit more open than what your manufacturer provided. And of course, if you have free and open source Android ROMs or application recommendations, feel free to sound off in the comments. I'm always interested in those recommendations. Just like you should be interested in this open source app that also happens to be today's sponsor. Thanks to OnlyOffice for sponsoring this video. OnlyOffice is the only Office suite I use on all my Linux PCs nowadays. It's open source, it's fast, it looks good, and it's super compatible with Microsoft Office formats. You can download it for free and run it locally on any computer, whatever the operating system, including Android and iOS. Or you can couple that with a free personal cloud that lets you edit online and can be connected to a lot of storage services you might already use, like Google Drive, Dropbox, Nextcloud, OneDrive, and a lot more. This personal cloud has received a big update recently with a dark theme, a free library of templates, it supports a ton more languages, and it has a lot of hotkeys you can use to navigate on top of having an interface refresh. If you need a powerful, cloud-ready, and compatible Office suite for Linux, or any other operating system, I don't think you can do better than only Office. So head over to the link in the description below to download it or create your own personal cloud. Okay, so the first and maybe the most complex step would be to replace your whole Android OS on your phone by a custom ROM. Because Android, as it's distributed on your phone, isn't really open source. It's based on the Android Open Source Project, or AOSP, but it generally includes a lot of proprietary stuff on top of it, either from Google or from the manufacturer. But we'll go pretty quickly on this topic, because it can be pretty complex depending on your exact model and brand, and this will definitely require a dedicated video in the future. What you really need to know is that it is possible to replace the factory Android version that you got on your device by a custom Android ROM, and some of them are open source. The general rule of thumb here is the newer your model or your phone is, the less likely it is to be supported by a custom Android ROM. One of the most well-known is Lineage OS, which builds on top of the Android open source project. It supports a lot of devices and it's open source, of course. Lineage comes with open source apps only, which means that if you install it, you're basically done with this video. Another interesting one, if you want to fully escape Google's ecosystem, is Graphene OS. It's built to remove every Google service on your phone, but fear not, you can replace them with something called Micro-G, which is a private, secure, and open source implementation of the same services that lets you basically access every Google app. The drawback of Graphene OS is that it only supports Google Pixels. And yet another one that I personally really love is Slash EOS. And despite its terrible name, it is even more de-Googled than Graphene OS. It's based on Lineage, and not only does it remove all Google services, replacing them with Micro-G out of the box, but it also removes lower level system calls to Google's time servers, connectivity checks, it lets you change the DNS servers to something that is not from Google. It's basically the perfect de-Googled ROM and it's all open source. I already have a few videos on Slash E, so check them out somewhere or in the link in the description if you want to know more about it. But replacing the whole operating system on your phone can be a tricky proposition and it also incurs some risks because you can actually break your phone if you're not careful. So a more simple step to begin with would be to replace all the default apps by open source ones. So first, Android allows alternative app stores. And if you're looking for fast apps, your best bet is FDroid. It's an application that you can install on any Android phone and that lets you download and install free and open source apps exclusively. It can be combined with the Play Store so you can still get any other app you want that is not on FDroid. Think of it as the FOSS Play Store. 
Although it's not much of a looker if I'm honest. To install F-Droid on your phone, just head over to their website, which I linked in the description, and click the Download F-Droid button. Your web browser might display something to ask you if you want to install apps from non-Play Store sources, so head over to your phone settings to allow this. It's generally under Install Unknown Apps or Install from Unauthorized Sources or something like that. Once it's installed, you just use it like any other app and you can get access to a plethora of FOSS applications you can install on your phone. It lets you browse by category, search for specific apps, update these installed applications and manage them and it even lets you add repositories like on your Linux distro. Of course, some of the apps we're gonna talk about here are also on the Play Store, so you can install them from there. But at least now you have a repo of apps that you can be sure are fully open source. So now let's start with Mail Clients. And the obvious one here is K9 Mail. It does basically everything you'd expect a Mail Client to do. With IMAP support, dark mode, unified inbox if you have multiple email accounts, per mail account notifications, email signatures, email encryption with open PGP, push notifications, and it also doesn't track anything you do, write, or send. It doesn't look like a five-year-old Android app either, which is nice, and it has a bunch of customization options, like selecting a light and dark theme for specific parts of the app, disabling animations using threaded conversations or not, setting up a quiet time to disable notifications, and it can even remove the app's user agent from email headers and use UTC instead of your time zone for extra privacy. All that is missing really is swipe actions on messages to delete or archive them, although this is being worked on with a pull request being made a few days ago being ready to ship in a beta. K9 Mail is so good, in fact, that it's going to be the base for the new Thunderbird Android application, which is no small feat. And of course, if you use Tutanota or Proton Mail, you can also get both of their applications, which are open source and are either on the Play Store or on FDroid. For web browsers, it's pretty easy. You don't even need FDroid to install open source browsers and replace the default one. Most Android ROMs that manufacturers ship use either Google Chrome or their own web browser based on Chromium, but they're generally not open source. Fortunately, you can find Firefox, Brave, and a lot more in the Play Store directly, including the DuckDuckGo or Ecosia browsers. You can of course make any of these your default browser in your phone settings. Hey, what do you want me to say here? You probably already know how to change your web browser on your Android phone, and there are no magical, wonderful choices apart from the ones you already know from your desktop. Did I miss the most important part? Yeah, you're right, the launcher. The launcher is basically how you place your apps on your home screens, how your home screen works, where is your app grid, how you place your widgets. It's the core part of navigating your Android phone, and most launchers that ship from manufacturers are not open source. Fortunately, there are some options to replace the launcher. And the first one is Launcher. It's basically a copy of the Pixel Launcher, but you will have to install it from their website as the version on FDroid is old, just like the one in the Play Store. It looks and feels exactly like the Google Pixel Launcher, with the ability to set an accent color, change the search provider for the bottom search bar, customize how icons look, the size of the icons and the icon grid, the gestures to navigate, and more. It's a good-looking and stable experience, but you will need Android 12 to get the latest version. I left a link to their website in the description. Another option is O-Launcher. If you want a really super minimalistic launcher with only a few links to most used apps, a daily wallpaper, and a list of applications that only appear by name, no icons. You can choose how many apps appear on the home screen, which apps are open by a swipe left or right, and that's about it. It's a really great option if you want the most minimalistic experience you can get, or if you want to try and reduce how much you'll use your phone each day. But if you want to use your phone to the fullest, it's definitely not for you. And in terms of open source launchers, that's about all I could find. Basically, all the others just look like they're super old or haven't been updated since 2019 or earlier. Now, for taking pictures, you basically have two really good options. If you want to snap quick pics and videos and you don't care about the settings, the resolution, the frame rate, or any of that stuff, then Simple Camera is for you. 
It's on FDroid or the Play Store and it just lets you take a picture or record a photo, enable the flash, change the resolution and that's about it. It also won't handle all your phone's cameras if you have multiple ones on the back. You either have the front one or the default back one. If you like tweaking every single setting before taking a picture though, you need open camera. This one has more settings than your entire phone, letting you pick the file format, quality, enabling HDR, stamping photos, showing angle and pitch lines in the preview, enabling face detection or anti-banding, and a lot, lot more. It lets you change the exposure, the white balance, it lets you pick any of your phone's cameras, it does basically everything. But whether you prefer the very simple experience of simple camera, or the complete full-featured open camera app, do note that these applications do not have access to the software post-processing that manufacturers add to their own camera applications, which means that even with a ton of customization and settings, your pictures might not look as good as the ones you can snap from the default app. Now, to preview these images, your best option is probably Simple Gallery. It has albums, search, and a bunch of options to include or exclude folders. It handles full screen previews. It lets you star, share, delete, and edit pictures with a lot of options to rotate, crop, invert, or apply filters. And you can save the modified image as a new one. You can also rename, move, show the location on the map, copy the file, hide it, set it as a wallpaper, basically everything you might want to do. What it doesn't do is detect faces or have a map view of all your pictures. I found these are features I do not use or want, but if you do then this probably isn't the right option for you. And you might have noticed that all these simple apps that I talked about kind of look alike. And that's because they're made by the same development team with the same user experience. They have a ton of different applications from the keyboard to the contacts list to the SMS messaging, the phone dialer, the calendar, basically you name it, the flashlight even. So they have a nice little collection. And if you want to replace most of your default apps by stuff that still looks coherent, simple apps are really your best bet here. As per map applications, your two best open source bets are OSM AND for OpenStreetMap Automated Navigation Directions or Maps.me. OSM AND has travel maps, offline navigation for cars, cycling or walking, and relief maps. It obviously uses OpenStreetMap, which is a very nice database. It has points of interest. You can save places as favorites. It does navigation with turn-by-turn -turn voice guidance and intermediate points. It can reroute you when you go off route. And of course it's open source and free of charge. It doesn't look too bad either. Although as with all OpenStreetMap apps, the map layers colors just look kinda off to me. Maps.me does virtually the exact same thing as OSM and, and also uses OpenStreetMap. But it adds travel guides to show you the interesting places to see or visit. And I find its interface looks a bit nicer than OSM and. Both are really, really good options that won't leave you wanting. I found that the support for public transportation for where I live is kinda hit or miss on OpenStreetMap, but I don't live in a major big city and they don't communicate this data openly, so maybe that's the issue here. And of course, I can't cover every single application type here. What you need to remember is that if you need a simple applications collection that is open source, Go with the simple apps collection. They're really, really good. They look coherent. And if you want to support them, they have pro versions that cost like, I think, $1 and let you just change the colors if you're not a fan of the orange. And apart from that, there are not that many really good open source apps to replace your default ones, unfortunately. But at least for each category, you have one or two options that are really, really good. And that hopefully should make you interested in looking for more open source applications for your Android phone. So if you're not yet ready to move to a custom Android ROM to completely open source your experience, this might be a good first step. And when you're ready, it might be time to start distro hopping, but on your phone, because the world of Android ROMs is pretty fun to explore. My favorite is definitely Slash E, because it's super simple to use, it looks coherent and nice, and it's completely de-googled, with awesome privacy features baked in. But depending on your phone's model, you might find others that suit you better. So, I hope this whetted your appetite for more FOSS on your Android phone. And of course, if you use FOSS apps on your phone or FOSS ROMs, 
don't hesitate to let me know about them in the comments. I'm super interested to try some stuff out. Just like you should be super interested in today's sponsor. Tuxedo is a company based in Germany and that ships worldwide a whole collection of laptops and desktops that run Linux out of the box. And why would you want that? Well, it just takes the whole complexity of finding a compatible device out of the picture. When you buy from Tuxedo, you don't have to research each individual component because you know that Linux just runs perfectly on them. And if there are some tweaks needed here and there, they have PPAs and repos that just lets you make sure that everything works exactly as intended. They have a big range of devices that should cover every price point and every need. They have good customization options, including custom keyboards, your own logo on the back and various CPU, GPU, RAM, SSD options. And as I said, they ship worldwide. So if you need a new device and you don't want to have to research online to see if your exact model that you're interested in might be compatible with certain distros, just buy a tuxedo laptop or desktop and you're certain that it's gonna run. The link is in the description below. Click it and get yourself a tuxedo device there. Really good. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, there's that dislike button and you can also leave me a comment to tell me why you think I suck. And if you really want to help support the channel, there's a PayPal link in the description, a super thanks button underneath the video, or links to my Patreon or YouTube memberships. Both Patreon subscribers and YouTube members get access to a weekly podcast every Monday, where I talk about Linux, the channel, my personal life, open source, and basically everything tech related. And you also get to vote on the next topics that I'll cover on the channel. So head over to the description if you want to support the channel. And in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.